Enjoy the sunset. It'll become dark soon. If you have a really great supervillain, it just takes up everybody's game because they got to take this creep down. How stupid do you think I am? There is no hero's journey without a villain. The better the bad guy, the better the hero. We need to start putting people in the ground. Genie dead. The house guest dead. I want him dead. Him dead. Finally. I've been waiting for you. Great Bernardus villain has to have big plans. You're gonna help me break into the British consulate right now. If you just wanna rip off a jewelry store, just go do it. We got other problems. Matt and I very early on tried to develop bad guys that were as smart, if not smarter than Michael, so that he always had to find some other way to take the bad guy down. Tyler Brennan came about when we wanted a villain that could do something that no other Burn Notice villains had ever done. Tyler Brennan is the guy who never believes Michael. He sees through Michael's plan. You want one or two days to scout? Yeah. Which would also conveniently give you one or two days to try and come up with a plan to wriggle out from under my thumb. That about the shape of it, Weston? He had a very sort of lasciviousness to him, which is always kind of creepy and gross. <laughs> Good for a bad guy. Keep looking at me that way, you're gonna have to buy me dinner. We all were big fans of The Shield, and we wanted to write a part that we knew that Jay Carnes could not possibly turn down. And you can just let your smart ass off the chain when you're writing Brennan. Did I go too fast? Are you lost, Sam? Don't take my silence for confusion, Brennan. I was just trying to kill you with my mind. Hello, Michael. The female bad guy can create an interesting dynamic Two bad guys, they're just gonna get mad at each other and there might be some fist fights. But with this, maybe a little nooky, I don't know. Are you gonna kill everyone I talk to? Better them than you, Michael. Trisha Helfer brought Carla's humanity. Someone who had bosses, someone who had people that she was afraid of. And so by the end of the season, you can really see the fear in her eyes. It's time you learned actions have consequences. Funny, I was thinking it was time for you to learn the same thing. She got shot. <laughs> Finally. Sorry, Carla. <laughs> Question. Gilroy actually kind of emerged over time. His affection for Michael, just how much he liked Michael, how much he enjoyed playing with Michael. I have to say, I find you quite fascinating. I bet you say that to all the girls. Only the ones I like. Chris Vance's Gilroy was very smooth. This guy's more like, he's like a silk shirt. Champagne's on me. Chris brought this playfulness. He managed to play him as a guy great at what he does. And he's also a guy who sort of has a crush on Michael. I just thought we could use a spot where we could talk freely about our future together. I like you, you know, like a friend. He pulled that off in a way that I thought was really respectful, really cool, and brought an added dimension to the character. And he kind of saves Michael's life. When Gilroy dies, you really see the magic of a great actor finding something that hadn't really been there when we were conceiving the character. Did I mention I'm attached to an explosive device? His plan has gone terribly wrong, and his attitude about it is sadness at being taken out of a game that he really loves to play. Perhaps you should run along. Mr. Your partner, I'm glad we found each other. When people are writing shows, there's a part of you that's just like, wow, I like that show. Let's see if we can meet that guy. We were all fans of Robert Wisdom's From the Wire. Michael, your old pal Vaughn here. It's been a while. We sort of play Vaughn as just a reasonable guy who Michael could see as possibly a bit of an ally. Let me know the next time you're in Miami, we'll grab a mojito. I'm in town right now. We wanted to show the organization where people that had gotten together with somewhat laudable intentions. You know what? I'm tired of this coy crap. What's that supposed to mean? In the way of such organizations that don't operate in public, it sort of twists to an evil purpose. I gave you a chance to be my friend. Now you're going to see what it's like having me for an enemy. By the end of that season, you see him really losing it. Say hi to mom. You, know, you see someone that we're satisfied in, in seeing taken down at the end of season four. See you soon. Hey, pal. Sorry about the mess. 
<laughs> Larry was sort of our first ongoing villain who had a really dynamic relationship with Michael. We do 20 missions on three continents, and this is how you greet me? Well, that was before you faked your own death and came back without a soul. Ouch, a little harsh, huh? He was sort of the doppelganger. He was the, the dark side of Michael. So I would key off a lot of what Jeffrey did as a guide to what Larry would do. You don't want to get shot in the neck. You do what I say. Because Daddy is in one of those moods. He's kind of a father figure to Michael. He's actually someone who, on a certain level, loves Michael and really sees the darkness in Michael and wants to draw that out. You let me kill those people. Because that was the job. Yeah, I did. I'm just like you, Larry. I knew with him. We were unstoppable. I mean, at least in my imagination. Jesus, every time I come back here, there is less of you in there. You're bottling up all your darkness, all, all the rage, all the good stuff that makes you who you are. Michael was the one person he had allowed himself to feel for. If he allowed any emotion about any person, it was about Michael. I think that there's a love-hate relationship. I think Larry loves Michael, and Michael hates Larry. I make my own choices. I don't kill anyone unless I have to. Yeah, well, we are different that way. I love the fact that he allowed himself the license to do anything, kill people. It's OK. Whatever's good for me is good for me. And it's not maybe good for somebody else, so so be it. Uh, you do kill people for money, Larry. I love the scenes with Bruce and just the open animosity. Really, they were the devil and the angel. I'm the angel saying, Mike, this is a bad plan. And Larry's like, don't listen to him. He's an idiot. And he's a washed up ex Navy Steel. <laughs> what the hell do you let this wet rag hang around for? We are definitely fighting for Mike's ear, but Sam's on the right side, so Sam will win, Larry. Look at that. Three to the chest. He didn't even get a shot off. <laughs> I just get better with age. Tim sort of invented the Larry change up. The, uh, the Larry's kind of going down one road emotionally, and then bam, he's in completely a, a completely different space. Larry, what are you doing? Adios! What are you doing? Larry enjoyed the, the mechanics of killing people and, 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 you know, he's a true professional. Mission accomplished? It keeps popping up. It seems like Larry was killed recently, but I'd be a little worried about that. He saw it come and he got out, you know, or he didn't. You know, it leaves room for a new character called Twice Dead Larry. Some people live. Some people die. Unless you're willing to see your girlfriend go to prison for the rest of her life, you will do exactly what I say. Well, Jerry Burns is Anson. He's taking it to a new level now because that guy takes weasel pills. I mean, he's the ultimate creep, the uber, uber villain. I've been pulling the strings all along. Anson emerged from wanting somebody involved with Michael's burning who really knew Michael. He dealt with Michael's father, talked to Michael's mom. Well, about five years ago, I arranged to substitute for Madeline's therapist. She didn't know who she was talking to. You son of a bitch. There's something so creepy about a shrink who is a bad guy because he's intricately involved in the web of thoughts and thinking behind every action. Look at your boyfriend, honey. He can barely hear a word I'm saying. I think Anson is the toughest villain I've ever encountered. The way he's written, the way he plays him. I try and make it sort of conspiratorial, like we're friends. And if you can just do this, life is going to be so much easier. I know, it sounds wrong, but it's not so bad, ultimately, if you do this, right? You know, you always play against the evil qualities. I try to make them as accessible as possible. That, I always find, makes a guy scarier. It's smart, Michael. It's very smart. Jerry's a really smart actor. He prepares a lot. Episode 16 was more or less based on Jerry's thought that, wow, it's almost like I could be teamed up with Michael at some point. Like, I could actually facilitate some sort of personal breakthrough in Michael's life. If you want to save your friends, you have to dig deeper. Where'd it all start? Why did 17-year-old Michael join the army? And also got him into Michael's head even further. To get away from my dad. Is that what you want to hear, no, Anson? No, no, no. There's a reason you have to be everybody's white knight. You thought if you saved the world, you'd be safe at home. I can push buttons that people don't even know exist in Michael Weston. You just say, oh, remember the time when your dad used to beat the crap out of your little brother? That must have been horrible, huh? And you know, and 
Steam comes out of his head. There's no moves left on the chessboard. He's the trickiest, he's the smartest, and he's the worst. And I want to be the guy to put a bullet in his eye. The curtain's about to part for our grand finale. I think we all have these fantasies of being the bad guy. Because they get to do all the fun stuff. They get to do the stuff that everybody wishes they could do. If we dig deep enough, that exists in all of us. We're all, we are all capable of being that bad guy. We are gonna have so much fun. Michael looks three, four, five steps ahead of the bad guys. They're trying to outwit him. Oh, you got something on your, that's now it's, you, you got something there. There is no hero without some nasty antagonist. You're not this good. Nobody is this good. Yes, I am. The nice thing about Burn Notice is good guys prevail. In our normal everyday lives, we don't get to see justice done. We see bad guys getting away all the time. Jesse, they're coming your way. Make it look good. Not on this show. If you want to see justice done, tune into Burn Notice. One bad guy at a time. Down they go.